you need to vaccinate them against pneumococcal vaccine, heat vaccine, capsulated organisms, because there may come a time when you may need to splenectomize them. So, before that, you need to give pneumococcal vaccine, heat vaccine, give hepatitis B vaccine, before he ever receives a transfusion. So, these three vaccines are to be taken care of. And they have to be told to keep on serially checking their hemograms. Because if he becomes, he goes to stage 4, he may require transfusion and then he may become transfusion dependent. Once he is transfusion dependent, then your role of hydroxyurea comes into the picture, not before that. Okay? So that is how you are going to manage these hereditary sclerosis. Madam, is there any dietary deficiency in this case? You have to give into the iron problem. If he has associated iron deficiency, to prove associated iron deficiency, you will have to do serum iron. You just can't give it. Particularly in any hemology condition. Because they anyway have increased absorption from the GI tract. So you don't give them empirical IR, you have to prove that it is an efficiency that is going to be. So I think all of you have got this on first shot here, hereditary sclerocytosis. We are not playing Abhishek Bachchan here, we know. But that is a good shot. Now, so what was our conclusion? What was the model of the story? That hemolytic anemia need not present as pallor. It may come to you as jaundice. All jaundice does not mean liver disease. Okay, so see that you always look at the color of the urine to establish what kind of jaundice it is. Is it a liver disease or is it a indirect or direct jaundice? Now this is the second case. We go on to the second case. He is a 12 year old boy. He is presented with progressive abdominal distension for the last 8 months. His abdomen is gradually increasing. And now he has got edema for one year. There is no jaundice, there is no bleeding from anywhere, there is no fever. He is just getting an abdominal distension which is going on and now edema for one day. So, what is the cause of the abdominal distension? What is the cause of the abdominal distension? What is the cause of the abdominal distension? We are so sure this is fluid. This is ascites. But we have to test and so think logically now. You tell me what do you think it is? Is it you are sure this is ascites? It can be organomegaly. He is telling me it's a liver. It's an organomegaly. Yeah. It's a edema. It's chronic liver disease. But there is no fever. May not have. Also, but there is a edema. That is that is so funny. I have a problem. I have a problem. Because listen, that's what he gave. But pay for it. It's not a medical term. No, it's not a medical term. But that is in 8 months. But it's not in 8 months. But that is 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 in 8 months. Yeah, so we can't judge. Suppose it's a momentum cyst. Dr. Ayyavadar, we know now you all are wrong. This is a surgical problem. This is degenerates, this is a momentum cyst. You have to examine it. Ah, examine it. What are the examples? Okay, I'm going to examine it. Fine. Abdominal distension causes this fluid, platelets, the six F's that we learned. Fluid, platelets, easy species, fat and organomegaly. Platelets is out because it can't be progressively increasing. It has to be coming and going, coming and going. Feces is out. This is not constipation. He didn't tell us constipation was abdominal distension. Fetus in a 12 year old boy, unlikely, until he has some new technology. <laughs> That, that movie was there, Arnold Schwarzenegger, he got pregnant, so new technology. Fat, progressive abdominal distension of fat, how much of a junk food you can eat, you can't just have abdominal distension, right? So all these four are out. That leaves you with what? Organo and fluid. So we need to examine what the problem is. So what can cause this edema? So low protein. So why is he having uh, low protein? Either there is an organ, either the fluid is ascites and there is edema because of low protein, or there is an organomegaly, hepatomegaly, low albumin and edema. But usually, if you are uh, telling that this is chronic liver with edema, he should have had other markers, not fever, but other markers of liver cell failure, like jaundice coming on, or maybe he should have had uh, spider nevi. So all those are not there. Just liver and ascites and edema. By the time a child or any patient with a liver comes with ascites, he is decompensated. 
He should be angry for the public. He should be having very many discussions. Eight months going on like this is there. So what is left behind is fluid HUD, right? So what could be the cause of ascites? We agree now. This is ascites. Now what could be the cause? Cause is low proteins of the ascites. So liver disease, kidney disease, polar hypertension, T and it could be infection, peritonitis. It could be TB or peritonitis. So now rule out various things here. Yeah, fever, TB going on for eight months without fever, without spreading elsewhere, unlikely. Same thing for peritonitis. Even the liver is out because jaundice is out. Eight months going on. The liver is still not completely different. Kidney is out. Kidney is a little normal. It comes with periorbital illness. Corner hypertension, what is it possible? PM, you think it's PM? PM doesn't start with ascites. It would start as generalized illness. So your PM is out, infection is out, TB is out, peritonitis is out. Yeah, kidney is also out. So that leaves you with liver and corner hypertension. Liver we are not still ruling out. There is a condition of liver which will just come as hepatomegaly and acidity, which I have already spoken but in the first but but Okay, so it is not out. Liver is not out. Okay. So this child somehow got landed up cheating with AKG for three months. I think we over-diagnosed. Now he was in some village and they treated him with TB. And this was wrong. This is not required. So we come to a conclusion that this is ascites with liver, either due to liver, which may be Bhatshiyari or this is Fodlar Bhatshiyari. Right? This is on our history we have come to this conclusion. Now, on examination he has got dilated veins, he has got massive ascites and he has got a hepatitis tumor. Now what is this? Fodlar Bhatshiyari. Fodlar Bhatshiyari. Fodlar due to what? Thrombosis. So you mean to say it's extra hepatic Fodlar Bhatshiyari. There is no liver problem. Why the liver is there? Why the liver is there? Ah, that means it has to become a very strong problem. So what is it? Bhatshiyari. How do you know this is Bhatshiyari? Okay, now we have a flow. This flow which is from below of the flow, right? The flow of the veins over the abdomen is below of the flow. Then obstruction of the flow. Below of the flow. What's the normal flow? Away from the umbilicus. So, above the umbilicus, upward. Below the umbilicus, downwards. In quadrilateral what is the flow? Normal. Quadrilateral is normal. Same flow. Same flow. Above umbilicus, upwards. Below umbilicus, down. Except that the veins are dilated. So, same. IDC obstruction, what is the flow? It won't be from below upwards. Any level IBC obstruction? Below only. IBC is obstructed. The venous supply has to go back to the heart. Here we have to cover at what level is obstructed? Below or above the abdomen? Which area? Below or above the abdomen. IBC is supplying your blood to the heart. It has to be below only. So it has to be from below. Not superior venous supply. Not superior venous supply. So it has to be from below. Now we have a flow below of this. So this is IVC obstruction. What is the diagnosis? What is the diagnosis? IVC obstruction. What is the diagnosis? You said it is Bhatshiyari. Bhatshiyari means there is obstruction either in the IVC or in the hepatic plate. Flow has to be from below of this. So this is Bhatshiyari. So now we are demonstrating it. Bhatshiyari. He is happy, no? He is happy, yes. He is also happy. So flow is from, away from abdominis, below of birth, normal. This is a normal flow. Formal hypertension also normal flow. IBC obstruction. So what's your diagnosis? Much here. Now how should this child be managed? Much here, you remember, it's like you have your hepatic veins. You have three hepatic veins in your liver. All three are blocked. Now, blood has to go out from there. How, what will happen? It has to go. Collateral is There is no time for collateral to form. So, aside starts from there. 
Now the only way that you can open this is through a plastic, angioplasty. Like how many do you know? Ah, through an angioplasty. Or put a stent. It's a rash Yeah. So if, if you don't, so it's a block, it's like a coronary block. You need to do stenting and angioplasty. In case of complete block, Why this was plastic? Children 9 years of age or 10 years of age, 10 size is not available. So it should be dilated. Can it be dilated? It can be dilated. You need a very good intervention of radiologist to do it. I recently had a bachi ali at 5 months. 5 months, you can imagine the size of the IVC, 2.5 millimeter. Then I send him to Gila for intervention of radiology. They just said, we can't do anything. And in fact, at that age, the only treatment available is transplant. So, if you can do a stent, very good. If you can't, at least dilate. If you can't do any of that, you need to do a bypass. Like how you do in a heart. So, you need to do a shun surgery. And as to most, the portal with the system is circulation. So, portal table shun. That is what the shun surgery is. Last resort is transplant. So, Marchiari is something which is very... Uh, emergency, we should not catch him at the ascetic phase, we should catch him much earlier. The problem is the IVC or it could be anywhere. Wherever, wherever the block is. It could be IVC, it could be anywhere. In that you do an angiography. Okay. So, so you do a digital angiography or you do a CT angiography or MRI angiography. So why do the hepatic enlargement in this person with ascetic? When the block is downwards, why the liver got enlarged? You can obviously get in that because where is the flow of the hepatic vein going? But I think the oxygen much for higher. From the hepatic vein that goes to the IVC. If the IVC is blocked, all that is going to accumulate in the liver. That's how we get enlargement and ascites, back changes. Please, I'm sorry. In this case, why do we don't do photocable and nascable? That is what? Shun surgery. Photocable. Photocable. That's your shun surgery. But again, when you anastomose in small children, arteries are 2 mm, 3 mm, the vessels are 2 or 3 mm. Doing an anastomose is difficult. So, surgery also may not give you a very good outcome. Older the children, bigger size vessels, better is the outcome. Younger the children, smaller size vessels, worse. So, you have to start preparing them for transplant. The liver picture is not congested. Yes, it is congested. That's what we are discussing. Isolated liver enlargement, rounded liver, fluid. No? So that's what it is going to be. I'm going to stop here because we have to, we, our guest of honor has come and uh, we need to just do a inauguration function and then we'll resume from where we left out.